Empathy is the ability to imagine oneself in someone else's place, to be able to see things from another person's perspective and to understand another person's emotion and to relate with what they feel. Empathy is at the foundation of all healthy and productive relationships because where there's empathy, there is greater understanding, compassion, caring, cooperation, collaboration, communication, resolution, and progress. Empathy helps us to more deeply connect with one another, to cultivate intimacy, to build trust, as well as to resolve disagreements, tensions, and conflicts, or to avoid them altogether. But where empathy is lacking, we become disconnected from one another, even sharply divided, which leads to greater conflict, hostility, and hatred. Without empathy, relationships fall apart. Families, communities, entire societies can collapse due to a lack of empathy, due to the lack of cohesion which empathy provides. And there has been a growing decline in empathy over time in much of society. And while there are a number of studies which attest to this, you really don't have to look any further than public discourse. Just in observing the way in which people engage and communicate, there is so much callousness and hostility, so much fighting amongst one another, so much name-calling and blaming and dismissal, so much polarization, and so much antipathy. So how might we reverse this trend? How might we increase our empathy? And that's what we're going to explore here today. Empathy is something which is inherent in all of us, with the exception of psychopaths who only make up a very small percentage of the population. But for the rest of us, which is most of us, empathy is a very natural human trait. However, there are a number of factors which can cause empathy to become diminished or obscured, whether it's the conditions in which we were raised or other social factors. There are many things in life which can cause us to become increasingly closed off and insensitive to others. And just as our empathy can become obscured, it can also be uncovered. We can get more in touch with our natural empathy and we can open up in such a way as to allow it more space to be expressed, more space to influence how we engage with others and how others engage in turn with us. So let's look at a few ways that we can open up to and exercise our empathy more effectively. When we're encountering others, rather than making assumptions or judgments, Seek first to understand. Be curious. Be inquisitive. Ask questions. Try to see the world from the other person's perspective. Understand that we all have our own unique perspective of the world due to so many varying factors. Where we grew up, how we were raised, what we do for a living, who we associate with, what kind of information we're exposed to, and so many other things. Many of the differences that we have in regard to our beliefs, politics, personal preferences, and so on, are greatly influenced by these factors. Something that I often consider is that if I had been born in someone else's place and grown up under the very same conditions with all the same events and people and influences, would I have turned out differently or would I be virtually the same? Focus on commonalities more than on differences. We all have our differences, and there's no doubt about that. And while we can certainly acknowledge these differences, see if you can look beyond them and find commonalities. We all have many things in common, more than you might initially realize. It may not always seem that way, but it all depends on how you look at it and what you choose to focus on. What I like to consider is that we're all human beings. We're all conditioned by our perspective upbringing. We're all imperfect. We all have our flaws and limitations. 
We all experience pain and disappointment. We all feel the same array of emotions, including fear, frustration, and sadness. And we all want to be happy, to feel safe, to feel secure, to feel loved, and to live in peace. And if we can approach one another with this in mind, that can be the foundation upon which to build connection. Try to see yourself and others as individuals rather than as members of a group. Most people identify with some religious or political ideology, nationality, ethnicity, and so many other things. And the more strongly that one identifies with any group, the more difficult it is to empathize with people outside of that group. So once again, it's important to remember that we're all human, first and foremost, and that we have far more in common with one another than we often care to realize. But at the same time, we're all unique, and even members within the same group can be quite different from one another. So even when you encounter someone who identifies with some specific group, Understand that you're still engaging with an individual, with a fellow human being who has their own unique perspective, their own personal life story, with their own unique experiences, and whose feelings are just as real and valid as your own. Another thing we can do is listen more attentively. When you're engaging with others, see if you can spend more time listening than speaking. See if you can listen with the sincere intention to understand, to try and see things from the other person's perspective. Try to understand why they see things the way they do. And more than this, more than just understanding their perspective, see if you can understand the underlying emotion. There's usually much more to what a person is expressing beyond the mere words. And the way that people think and perceive can often have a great deal to do with what they feel. Even when a person's emotional state seems obvious and clear, there can often be something else beneath the surface. For instance, if a person seems angry, anger is often arising from some other underlying emotion such as fear or frustration, and we all know what it's like to feel frustrated and fearful. Sometimes we're frustrated simply because we don't feel heard. We might be accustomed to people dismissing or ignoring what we say without making any effort to understand. But when people feel heard, they tend to be more calm, more relaxed. They tend to open up more, allowing for greater connection. When you really listen to someone without judgment, it shows that you respect them. It shows that you care. And oftentimes, they will show you the same respect in return. When there is mutual respect, the other is usually just as willing to listen to you as you are to them. A lot of problems and conflict in the world could more easily be resolved if we treated one another with more respect if we listened more and sought to understand one another. Now, there's a couple of other things that I want to add to all of this. A couple of observations I've had about how our own emotional state can play a significant role in how well we're able to empathize with others. And I've observed, first of all, both in myself as well as in others, that the more out of touch we are with our own feelings, that is, the more that we reject or repress our own feelings, especially feelings like grief, sorrow, hurt, humiliation, and insecurity, the more insensitive we tend to be in regard to the feelings of others. In order to empathize with someone, you have to relate to what they're feeling. And if you aren't allowing yourself to feel certain emotions, then naturally it's much more difficult to relate to those same emotions when others are experiencing them. 
oftentimes when a person is expressing what they feel, we might be dismissive simply by trying to encourage them not to feel that way or to get over it or to offer them some distraction. And it may be that the reason that we do this is because we find ourselves uncomfortable. It may be that their feelings are triggering the same unresolved feelings in ourselves, feelings which we're trying desperately to avoid. Just in the same way that we dismiss those feelings in ourselves, we have the tendency to dismiss them in others. But if we can acknowledge those feelings in ourselves, to accept them, to allow them, and to begin processing them in a healthy way, this also increases our sensitivity to the feelings of others. And we naturally become more empathetic and more compassionate. Now, on the converse, I've also observed something quite the opposite to this, which is we can be so absorbed in our own emotional suffering that we become numb to the suffering of others. Our own suffering is so heavy that we don't want to take on the additional weight of someone else's. It can feel like we're too overwhelmed by our own suffering to be concerned with what others may be feeling. Or it may feel as if no one understands our suffering, or maybe no one cares, and so why should we care about anyone else? Maybe we feel so alone in our suffering. Maybe we feel like no one is helping us, and so we become bitter and resentful. And in that bitterness, we refuse to care about anyone else. The reality, however, is that we all experience suffering in all of its various forms. And if we can recognize this, our own suffering can become the means by which we are better able to empathize with others. And when we empathize with others, it actually reduces the intensity of our own suffering. When we're focused solely on our own suffering, that in and of itself creates a sense of isolation and loneliness, which makes our suffering feel all the more intense and overwhelming. But when we shift our focus to acknowledge that others are suffering as well, and that many are suffering in very much the same way as we are, we realize that we're not alone. And when we begin to feel that sense of compassion for the suffering of others, because we know what it's like to suffer in that way, that compassion is arising from love, and that begins to fill us with love. And love brings about a whole different quality to our experience. Because where there is love, suffering is diminished. And so empathy can be a means of reducing our own suffering. Once again, empathy is at the heart of all healthy relationships. It's the foundation of constructive communication. It's the foundation for connection, for cooperation and collaboration. It's what binds communities together. It's what inspires us to care for one another, to help and assist one another. And without it, we cannot have a healthy society. Without empathy, we would have no regard for one another, no respect, no compassion. Everyone would care only for themselves and society would collapse because we need one another to make it work. Our survival depends on our working together and helping one another. It's been my experience that when we're more empathetic, more understanding, more kind and considerate of others, it encourages the same in others. Maybe not in everyone, but in some. So if we want others to be more empathetic, more kind and compassionate, the best we can do to influence that is to be a living example of it by getting more in touch with our own empathy and allowing it space for expression.